Welcome to part two of the Lucas Lummer primality test. In this video, we are going to be proving a formula for our function of like the S, S in video or the S in function from last time. If you remember, this function is pretty uh, hard to calculate because to calculate X, S4, we have to calculate, we, we know S0 is given, and then we have to calculate S1, S2, S3, and S4. So we have to do a lot of calculations. So what would be really nice is if we had a way to get like S4 in just one calculation. And there is such a way to do that, and that is what we will be getting in this video. And from there, we will go on to prove that the lucas Lyman primality test, if it says it's prime, it's prime. If it says it's composite, which we remember it means not prime, it's composite. So therefore, uh, yeah, so let, let's get started. So our first step is to define two numbers. All right, so those two numbers we we are going to call. Uh, let, me, let me get a new paper. Okay, W, and we are going to call it W bar. So we are defining two numbers. So let's see. Can you see this? Yeah. Um. So this right here is W, and this is W bar. I'm, I may have written them too close together. I don't want to confuse people, so I'm going to move W bar. Over here. Okay, so we have two numbers, W and W bar. Now, W, it turns out, we define it to be equal to 2 plus the square root of 3. And W bar is equal to 2 minus the square root of 3. So there's some similarities and some differences between them. They're both 2 and then the square root of 3. One adds them and one subtracts them. So... Just to clarify, w is 2 plus the square root of 3, and w bar is 2 minus the square root of 3. So now we have defined our two numbers, w and w bar. These numbers will be used in our explicit formula for the s thing we defined in the last video. Uh, an explicit formula just means you don't have to like compute s0, s1, s2, like up to s a billion. You, you can just plug in and get it directly. It's a lot quicker, and so that's why we need it. Um, okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to prove that this formula... Oh, yes. oh sorry, I haven't shown you the formula. Um, yeah. Okay. So what I have right here is a formula... Um, basically, 4 s n. So w to the two to the n plus w bar to the two to the n is equal to s n. This formula is what we are going to be proving in this video. First, I would like to sort of explain what this formula means. So basically, if you remember, our s function was defined back here, where you had to basically iterate, like go all the way. Now what we can do if we want to find S4, we don't have to do all this. We can just plug 4 directly into this formula. So it would be W to the power of 2 to the power of N, or in this case N is 4, W to the power of 2 to the power of 4, plus W with, or sorry, W bar to the power of 2 to the power of 4. Also, uh, it's, it's not W to the power of 2 to the power of N, it's W to the power of 2 to the power of N. Um, and that would be equal to S4. So... We are going to prove this in this video. Um, so let's get started. So first of all, we are going to prove that this is true when n equals 0. And then we are going to prove that if it was true for one term, it must be true for the next. Or if it was true for some n, it must be true for the next n. So what this, what this will do is, is it means we know n equals 0, this formula works. And that means because n equals 0, it means it's true from the next one. n equals 1 works. n equals 2, dot, dot, dot. And therefore, we all prove this formula for all values of n. Or all integer values. Whatever. Uh, anyway. So first, to prove this, this is the easy part. We want to prove this for, this formula is correct for n equal to 0. So this is the easier part because we can just plug in n is equal to 0. So I'm going to do that right here. 
So remember, what we're doing is we're proving this formula is correct when n is equal to 0. So OK, so what we need to do is prove that this is true. I've plugged in n is equal to 0. OK, so if you remember from the previous page, s0 is equal to 4. So therefore, we know that um, at s0 over here, this is 4. So we just need to prove this is 4. And then we've completed our task, or the first part, where we prove that this is true when n is equal to 0. So 2 to the power of 0. So, so first of all, what we're trying to on this side, we have w to the power of 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. Same thing over here, w bar to the power of 2 to the power of 0. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. So we just have w to the power of 1 plus w bar to the power of 1. So all I want to prove is that this is true, and we will have completed the first part. So if we substitute in w, 2 plus the square root of 3, and w bar, 2 minus the square root of 3, we can do this. I'm going to substitute this in. All right. So as you can see right here, we have substituted these in. And now anything to the power of 1 is just itself. So this right here is 2 plus the square root of 3 plus 2 minus the square root of 3. The square root of 3 is cancel out. So we're just left with 2 plus 2 which is 4. So therefore, we have proved our um, formula for n is equal to 0. So if you remember earlier where I explained like what we're going to do to prove this for all n, then you'll remember that the next step was to prove if it's true for some value n minus 1, then it must be true for the next value n. So all this means like if this formula ended up being true for like s is equal to, or sorry, s25, then it must be true for s26. And if you remember, this will prove, because if, if, that, if that is true, since we already know it's true for 0, that means that's true for the next one. And then the, because that's true, it must be true for the one after that. And after that, dot, dot, dot. OK, so now we're going to prove the second part, which is slightly harder. But it's still doable, so don't worry. Um, OK, so let's see. So for this part. We have right here. Uh, this is sort of our definition of Sn. So what we can do is assume that this formula is true for n minus 1. This formula, assume it's true for n minus 1. That means S n minus 1 is equal to w to the power of 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus w bar to the power of 2 to the power of n minus 1. So now what we need to show is if it was true, if what we assumed was true, then it must be true for the next number. So what we need to prove now is that Sn is equal to, it, it, this formula is true for that. So basically because of, of this formula, um, we, we have Sn is equal to So what we have here is we're assuming that this formula down here works for n s for n minus one. So then, if that if that was true, if it does work, then we can substitute it in right here. Okay. So now what we can do is we can expand this out. Um. So we get, um, basically, you know, we're just expanding this sort of square out. So we get, and remember, it's not equal to the first term squared plus the second term squared is equal to the first term squared plus the second term squared plus two times the first term times the second term. All right. Um, OK. Um, so yeah. So just, just to clarify, remember, we're not proving right here that it's true for Sn. We're proving that if it's true for Sn minus 1, then that means it's true for Sn. And then from that, we will be able to well, I'll, I'll get to that part in a little while. Um, sorry, I'm running out of space a little, but I think it's fine.
Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot like a two, sorry. Okay. So what we have here is I've just expanded out the square. We have the first term squared plus the second term squared plus two times the first term times the second term minus two. So now there's a few things we can do to make this a little simplified. So first of all, what we can do, if, if you look up here, this term squared, we, uh, if, if you remember, uh, base, it, it's a rule of exponents. You can basically just move this two over here. So it's w to the power of two times two to the minus one, which is just two to the n. So all I've said is this right here, just this term right here, that I can bring the two sort of up here, and it's w to the power of two times two to the n minus one. Two times two to the n minus one is two to the n, so therefore this term right here is equal to w to the power of two to the power of n. So I'm gonna rewrite that. So so uh, sorry, um this term is equal to this one. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very similarly, same argument works here. So this one is w bar to the power of two to the power of n minus one squared. You can just bring the two inside, w bar to the power of two times two to the n minus one, and two times two to the n minus one is just two to the n. So this is right here is equal to w bar to the power of two to the power of n. So I'm gonna write that on that term too. Okay. So I've written my first two terms. Now this term right here, what what I'm gonna do is you notice I have right here, I'm I'm gonna put this two to the side for a second. I have w to the power of something, and I have w bar to the power of the same thing. So I can combine them. This is just w times w bar to the power of that thing. So um, Alright, so, um, so what I've done here is I've basically just taken this uh, w to the power of something times w bar to the power of the same thing is equal to, I can just take their product first and then raise it to that. Now, uh, here we go. Alright, so now what, what we have here is um, I'm basically going to multiply, I'm going to go up up on, onto the top of the page, which, and I'm going to multiply w and w bar, okay? So I'm going to multiply these out. Now, if you remember over, over here where I defined w, and I defined w bar, so I'm just going to plug those in. Okay, so we just need to figure this out. So it's 2 squared. Um, so basically, remember our, our, how, how we do this? We take this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this. So I'm going to write all four of those down. Okay. So I've written all four four of those terms. So this one right here, this is four. So this right here is four. This right here is some something. And notice these. These two right here, these cancel. These are this these this and this are opposites. So when we add them we get zero. So these terms cancel each other out. So we're left with um yeah, sorry, give me, give me one second. I forgot a minus sign right there. Um so basically so we're left with this 4, and then this is plus square root of 3 times, I'm not sure if you can see the minus sign, negative three root, square root of 3. So the square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is just negative 3. So this is 4 plus negative 3, which is equal to 1. So I'm just going to go over that again. To find w times w bar, we multiplied this and this. We got our four different terms. These two canceled each other out. This term, 2 times 2 is 4. This term is 3 times negative square root of 3, although I drew the negative sign badly, so just imagine a negative sign there. This would be negative 3. So I add the 4 and the 3. I don't add these because these cancel each other out. And then I get 1.
So therefore, w times w bar is equal to 1. So, if you remember where we were before this, I can substitute back, back here, right here, I, I can substitute this in into my equation back here. So this right here is 1, as we figured out just now. 1 to the power of whatever this is, 1 to the power of anything is 1. So therefore, th this thing, sorry, oh, it's hard to trace it exactly. But yeah, um, so basically, this right there, that is 1. So therefore, th this, so I I'm going to write that. So this is just equal to, well, so therefore, um, th this sort of simplifies to this. And now 2 times 1 is 2, minus 2 is 0. So these guys cancel. So we're left with w to the power of 2 to the power of n plus w bar to the power of 2 to the power of n. So therefore, we've achieved our formula. Okay, so now I'm going to try to go more in detail about how this proves the entire thing. So, first of all, we proved that our formula, first of all, I'm just going to show you the formula again so you have it fresh in your mind. Our formula, where, where was it? Okay. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I may have written on, no, no, I did write it on that side, sorry. Uh, so it's right here, right there. Okay, so we proved that formula down here, right, right here. Right, we proved that for n equal to zero, right? We, this is our formula. This is what we're trying to prove for all n, or all n where n is a whole number. So we proved it for n equal to zero, right? Now, what we just did, okay, so let's see what we have. So we have two steps. We proved it for n equal to zero. So now what we just did is we assumed it was true for n minus 1, and that would lead to be true, being true for n. So our two things we've done, we proved it for 0, and we proved it that if it's true for n minus 1, it's true for n. If it's true for one term, it must be true for the next term. So do you see what this means? This means because it's true for 0, it must be true for the next term, which is 1. So therefore, it's true for 1, so it has to be true for the next term after that, 2. And so because it's true for 2, when I say it's, I mean our formula. Our formula is true for 2, it has to be true for the next one, 3. And so this chain continues forever. Now, I, I think that's a very neat way of proving things. Um, so, yeah, we just proved it for, like, our, the first time we cared about, and then we proved that it had to, it was sort of like an infinite domino chain. So, um, yeah, so I, I think it's a really cool proving method. Um, so basically we have proved this formula now, right here, that one. Um, that, oh, yeah, so that is the goal of this video. Um, and we have succeeded in our goal of proving that formula. So now this video is over. Please watch the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.